you brought up something that's so important because when I work with people and, and they go on a high raw food diet or or just vegan diet, I'm very concerned because when I lived in New York, I didn't know the difference between a ripe apple or an unripe apple or or anything like that. Now that I'm growing my food, I could say like 95% of the fruits and vegetables, especially the fruit that I find in the stores, I wouldn't even think of eating. Like I was in the store the other day and I, I looked at my fruit tree on the way to the store. I have beautiful yellow star fruit on the tree. I went to the store at Whole Foods, $3 for one green star fruit. It's I would never. You don't eat much. Fruit. You don't eat star fruit, do you? How much star fruit do you well, eat? Well, not not much. But but I have a tree. But I would never pick a, a star fruit off my tree green. I would wait till it's ripe. But you know, not, point is, they're not getting ripe ripe fruit in the store. I agree. You don't. You never have eaten figs unless you've eaten them ripened on the tree. Yeah. And what about apricots? You get you. They don't even have taste good. But you buy. You ever eat an apricot that like got growing you ripened on a tree? It's like unbelievable. But this is what people are doing. This is what people are doing. And even like people, if they're on a, a raw food diet or a vegan diet, the source of their vegetables and fruits are so low quality. Yeah. It's not grown in good soil. It's commercially grown. It's picked unripe. It's shipped all over. And they think yeah. because it's organic, they're getting the best. But then, they, then they're concerned why they're not seeing the improvements that they, they need. You know, it's, it's well, so I agree with you. Now, on this topic, this is something that's very controversial, and I've heard you talk about this a little. So you and I grow fruit trees, and I live right near Hippocrates Health Institute. I love sprouting. I love microgreens. I love sprouts. However, uh, Brian Clement at Hippocrates Health Institute, for people that have a disease, does not recommend fruit. But for people that do have a disease, I mean, that don't have a disease, he he says to limit the fruit to only 15% of the diet. And I know you've said not to that degree we should limit it, but do you think, and I asked this question to other guests, is it possible if you're getting good quality fruit, is it possible to overeat on fruit? And I know an answer could be, well, we could overeat on anything, but is it realistic that you can overeat on fruit? Because I've seen some people eat a lot of fruit and most of their diet's fruit. Is that a good thing or a bad thing in your opinion? Well, it's a good question, and I'll try to answer it. Um, because I've had a lot of experience with people on fruitarian and raw food type diets over the years. And this and science has corroborated what the findings here as well. And that is that when you're younger and your ability to assimilate protein is high, then a diet that's mostly fruit can work okay. But as we get older and we're passing the age of 70, 75, and 80, that means the last 20 years of our life, between 80 and 100 years old, our ability, because we want to live to be 100 years old if possible, let's say. And this wouldn't matter that much if you're dead at 75, like most Americans, you know, then do whatever you want. But for those of us who are eating healthy to live longer, the ability to assimilate protein goes down with aging. And out of the five plant foods, or six, fruits, vegetables, beans, nuts and seeds, intact whole grains, did I miss anything? Fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, intact whole grains, and beans, right? Out of the five, the only one low in protein is fruit. So when you increase too much, and the ones that are highest in protein are vegetables, beans, and nuts and seeds, okay? So by increasing the fruit in your diet, you're lowering your protein in your diet. As you eat, and that's why all raw may not work for the not work well for the elderly, and why some people on raw food diets can have higher risk of well, pneumonia. There's different ways to go raw, and the way Hippocrates promotes it. So, like as good as a bean is, according to Hippocrates, when you sprout that bean into a microgreen, you're getting so much more of abundance of the protein. I guess that would make up for. May, you could eat the bean sprouted, you're saying. Yeah. Yes. Or, you could sprout or a microgreen, cooking. like a sunflower into a sunflower sprout. So, but yeah, but you're also make turning the sunflower seed or the bean into a into a vegetable, which lowers its caloric density. Very oh. good for a person looking to lose weight, but maybe not for a you know it's hard to get enough calories. But but in any case, there's nothing wrong with eating some nuts and seeds not sprouted anyway. But both are good oh. for sure. Not denying the the um the health promoting effects of those foods. 
But what I'm saying right now is that um, there's some validity there as we age and as that the, in certain in some individuals that your immune system, there's something called immunosenescence, the weakening of the immune system because we don't live forever and what's going to eventually kill you could be an infection. And that being too fruitarian could enhance immunosenescence due to protein insufficiency as you age. And we do, we do see better outcomes long term when people pay attention to protein adequacy as they get older. And that the studies um, corroborate this, that enhancing the quality of plant protein with the consumption of green vegetables, broccoli, sprouts, nuts, seeds, and beans does is our link to enhancement in lifespan. So I'm not saying a person can't eat um, 30% of their diet from fruit, 40% of the diet from fruit. I probably do that, you know, 30%, 40% range. There, but, but I want to pay attention to that 60 or 70% that I'm getting enough protein and enough exposure from vegetables. Being, I don't want to go to 50 to 60, 70% from fruit because now I'm going to be, now I'm getting 70. I want to maintain my muscle mass, my strength, my physical activity. And I know some fruitarian guys who are very physically fit and have a lot of muscle and doing great, but I don't think they're going to do that great when they pass the age of 80. You start to hire higher ability, making muscle tissue and building so much protein. So at that point, I think that we may be some um, may be valuable to making sure you consume enough calories from the higher protein plant foods, including hemp seeds and soybeans. You know what I mean? To make sure you have wow. adequate protein availability, because wow. you know everybody else is telling you to eat meat. We're just saying, yeah, eat some eat some edamame and some hemp seeds in your diet, and uh, don't make it all fruit. We're not telling you to eat meat, but in any case, you know what I'm saying. 